I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright and I am here with the super millennial David Barreto. How you doing, Big Dave? Doing great. So this week... Our topic is inspiration in today's Connection Thursday. Let's talk about the courage to inspire. Before we get started, those in the Stress Mastery community, you do have Lesson 2 in Module 4 up, and we're talking about the want of control. Simply watch the video, the handout's there, and there's simple action steps to start getting you to start understanding and releasing that particular want. And next week, we will be talking on the want of security. Anything you have? Um, no, the only thing I have is uh, when, when you guys go through this um, module and this lesson, if you have questions, comment inside the lesson, and it kind of stores it all in one area. So oh. if people who do have questions, when they click it, it's like kind of a forum space. For Will it. I get notified when they do that? Yeah, you, we, we get notified. All the coaches okay. will get notified for any comments or anything you guys I'm still, do. Because I actually still learn how to use the community myself, people. So yeah. I understand. Bill's coming out of the Stone Age. There but yeah, uh, yeah, if you guys go into lesson and you comment inside the lesson, we will get notified that you commented inside the lesson. So we know it's specific to that lesson and we get to answer it. So anybody who's going through it as well can scroll down and if they have the same question, they'll see that one of the coaches um, have answered it and you know helped the community out And we've like had that. a lot of new people coming in. And remember, you, can, you don't have to go in order, but you should try to look at alpha class. But it's up to you how you want to come into the community. I'm not going to dictate the best way because I don't think there's a best way. Some people are coming in for the for the lifestyle. Some people are coming in for the purpose. You know, so take your time and enjoy mm -hmm. the process. That's yeah, it's there. What what I what I always recommend to people is to check out Alpha Class, which is kind of like the learn to walk before you run thing. And if you don't need it, then go ahead and skip through. You mm -hmm. know, to what you need. But uh, at least take a look because there's nine times out of ten there is something in there that you are learning, or it will familiar uh, get you familiar with the way that we teach, the terminology, and the way that the community runs. And then from there, you, you know, you guys are good to go. Okay. So you're ready to go here. We're talking today on the courage to inspire. So the definition of inspired is, an, is of extraordinary quality as if arising from external creative impulse. This is arising energy. Now, the definition of courage is the ability to do something that frightens one. So we are discussing today the courage to inspire. So how many times have you had an idea, a spark of inspiration, and you held back on it? You didn't act. You didn't speak of it. You repressed it. You were afraid it was dumb or that someone might ridicule you. You ever have that? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. so what happens when that happens, the spark of inspiration never becomes the flame of creation. It's pretty good, huh? That is pretty good. That is pretty good. <laughs> I, I just, as I'm saying, it's pretty good. So it's important because that spark has to become a flame. And make no mistakes, it takes courage to live in inspiration. Courage is the energy that is the doorway to manifestation. To be or act inspired begins with the courage energy. This energy is the door to the green zone. It's what connects us to the parasympathetic nervous system. This is the connection to head, heart, hand. This is the connection to personal growth and expansion. And this is the energy that turns that spark of inspiration into the fire of manifestation. So the courage energies is the 200 energy. In that 200 energy, you become alert, aware, and this energy creates focus and confidence. It is the courage energy that connects us to the purpose. When in courage, we are inspired. We are strong, happy, positive. 
So why, if this courage energy brings us so much joy, do we fail to connect to it? Because everything has a pendulum. Right? So why do you think, so people get these sparks of inspiration. You have people come up to you all the time. Mm -hmm. I got this idea. It was great. And it's a good idea. And you see six months later, you see them and they didn't do anything. Why? I think it goes to uh, what I talked about on, on Monday. People are very passionate, but without turning that into action because of fear. That's it. You get stunted. That's your answer. The answer is, you're right, David. The answer is fear. We are programmed to conform to the beliefs and standards of the dominant reality around us. Mm -hmm. That's the way we're programmed. We have a spark of inspiration, but our desire in life is to fit in with others so we can be accepted by them. Remember, desire is a want, right? Let me repeat that. We, we get the spark of inspiration, but our desire, our wants, what we're studying in the community right now, in life is to fit in with others so we can be accepted by them. This is the ego and its base of wants. This is what people are stuck. It's why they don't move. Even those who may act under inspiration and express themselves creatively, they may even write the book, paint the picture, start the business, will be caught in the desire energy for people to buy their books or come into their business. That also keeps them stuck in want. They live in fear. They go from courage and flow to fear and force. And that's why a lot of businesses fail and a lot of things fail. But most people never get this far. They put out the spark of inspiration before they even tell a single soul of their dreams, their thoughts. And it's actually their thoughts crucify their crazy idea. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. So if they should tell someone and that person doesn't see what they see, they will bury that inspiration as a stupid dream or a wish. Each time an inspired spark is extinguished, the world suffers. Yeah. Right? For it sure. never got manifested. It's not just you that suffers. Original works of inspiration breaks new ground for everybody in the world. The iPhone was a spark. The computer was a spark. The automobile was a spark. Electricity was a spark. Literally. Literally. <laughs> All great creators had the spark of inspiration. They had a creative vision of what could be. A true artist is one who has the courage to act on their inspiration. They act and create their art even when someone or everyone they love tells them it's stupid. Ever have that happen to you? Actually, I would say I have a pretty supportive uh, group around me. I, don't, I can't pull up a time, no. I've had more people tell me I'm crazy. <laughs> I tell you that. I'm pretty crazy. <laughs> you know, what happens is they create people create their art without, you know, if you can create your art without worry or fear, if their art will bring them riches, you just create the art. You don't write the book to sell the book. You don't mm -hmm. create the business to to you want to make money you got to make money right but you create the business to be a service you're not breaking it for dollars if you're making it just for dollars and then you might as well just be an investment banker buy businesses close businesses and do that and that's an art in itself too right so there are many successful artists that have created and failed because we have to understand that the biggest issue with inspiration you're an inspired purpose too yeah, I've kind of set you up so you can live your purpose all the time. Just hit you with another thing, right? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I won't talk about it. I said I wouldn't talk. Why'd you look scared? I was like, all right, here don't we talk, go. Don't talk, don't <laughs> talk. No, I'm not talking about it yet. No, but you saw that, right? You always are, there are, there are people, the reason you're, you're, you have inspiration, people have ideas, they have dreams, right? And the fear is so strong that they won't step out and take action towards it. They think, well, that's been done already, right? 
How many people have said that's everybody? When we started the podcast, how many people told us not to do the podcast? Yeah. Even very good friends that were in the industry said, this is no good anymore. This platform's gone. I can't remember that. Was that three, three years ago, right? Now mm-hmm. the platform's bigger than ever. It's bigger than radio. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And we were told that because I had a radio show. Right? I think a, uh, a lot of people, most, I think for inspiration, when that spark is being cut off or shut off, um, the fear stems from the past, from a lot of people seeing that, oh, it's failed before. Mm-hmm. And I think when you're really connected and you're inspired, even if you failed or there was failure, your inspiration is to how can I make this work? Instead of saying, okay, it's done. Because, like, the first person to ever do something, like the plane. I always think about the plane when I think of Spark. Right. The Wright Brothers. <laughs> how the heck yes. did you say, I'm going to fly? You know how dangerous that is? But nobody's done that before. So there wasn't nothing to base their past fears on. But the people who tried to correct it and fix it after mm-hmm. had all that fear to go off of. And I think that's the same thing with a lot of people. That spark is shut off because of the past. And I think the spark is shut off because they're afraid of being embarrassed. That's mm-hmm. You know, people have a huge fear of being embarrassed, mm-hmm. right? So many successful artists have created and failed. Let's go through some of them. Okay? We'll start with David Barreto. So, <laughs> we won't go. I don't have, I only got a half hour show. So, number one, Sir James Dyson. His art was the vacuum cleaner. He had a prototype that failed, you ready? 5,126 times over 15 years. His business today is worth $4.5 billion. 5,000 failures. But he had a spark, he had an inspiration, he had the vision, he lived it. That's that's amazing, isn't it? So let's look at Steven Spielberg, number two. His art was making movies, or is making movies. Spielberg was rejected twice by the University of South California School for Cinematic Arts. His movies have gone on to gross more than $9 billion. Couldn't get into school. (laughs) Rejected. Imagine. I feel that one. Yeah, and how many people have that happened to? They didn't get this or this, and they feel like, well, I'm not... I'm not smart enough or good enough because this school turned me down. Well, that's where I started, too. I applied for universities, and I ended up having to go to community college and didn't even want to be there. So it kind of did me a favor. Same thing with these guys. Yep. You know? So think about that. So number three, Thomas Edison. His art was inventing. Edison was told by his teachers that he was so he was too stupid to learn anything. He would go on to hold over 1,000 patents, including the phonograph and practical electrical lamp pretty dumb guy right so how many people out there listening have had a guidance counselor or a teacher make them feel and create a program that they weren't smart enough to do certain things Mm -hmm. it's ridiculous there is no such thing as not being smart enough there really isn't there really and we talked about yesterday about between knowledge and knowing it's there is no such thing number four walt disney his art was his imagination. <laughs> Again, I always laugh because now that I'm in Orlando, what the hell did that guy see in the middle of the swamp? There's an alligator living down the street, David. Oh, no, I'm going to build a Magic Kingdom right here. Yeah. And so <laughs> Walt Disney, his art was his imagination. He could envision the most incredible world, yet... He was told by his former newspaper editor that he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. He would become an icon. Disney's take on failure is this. I think it's important that when you're young, because it makes you kind of aware of what can happen to you because of it. I've never had any fear my whole life, but I think it's important you fail when you're young. Because once you fail, then you don't you don't you don't have any more fear when you've been near collapse and all of that i've never been afraid again you see without fear disney remained in courage and he was able to stay inspired so he says you got to have huge fear and collapse first while you're young got enough in yet we're getting there <laughs> we don't have too many anymore but do you understand so 
How many people, and that's why I'm using these examples, right? How many people have been told by a boss or um, a, a supervisor that they weren't good or they weren't good at this? or then? And remember, that's that person's perception. How many people listening have had something like that happen to them and they carry that perception of this other person in an event that happened in their past to the present? And it extinguishes the flame of their spark. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. So number five, Albert Einstein. His art was his mind. I thought it was his hair. He had some hair. When you, you when you use Einstein's name, it's automatically tied to intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. You're no Einstein. Yet, he didn't start speaking until he was age four. He didn't start reading until he was age seven. And it was thought that he was mentally handicapped. He would go on and win a Nobel Prize and alter the entire world of physics. And yet, teachers, how many times, and you look at the programming, right? A lot of these people were affected by teachers, right? Mm -hmm. Teachers are amazing. They're important. They're also very influential to that human being sitting in your classroom. Yeah, I, I think that's a big one. And it's unfortunate because like all the teachers that I've had that stand out all have went kind of against the grain in what they were supposed to be teaching because they taught us more about like kind of like the life I could even tell you my third grade teacher was one that taught me about being creative and doing all that stuff and that literally is holding with me today and that's because they went against what the school system is teaching I hate to say that but that's mm -hmm. true right you have great teachers who are forced to make at, a living which you just said unfortunate. No, look at how that person mm -hmm. influenced your spark yeah. And what you're doing today, mm -hmm. right? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that was in third grade. Yeah. Number six, J.K. Rowling. Her <laughs> art is writing. But before there was a wizard, Harry, there was welfare. Rowling broke, depressed, divorced, single mother, wrote a novel while studying. Today, she's one of the richest women in the world. Here's her take on failure. It is impossible to live without failure at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. Right? Yeah. Gotta fail fast. Get out there. If you have an idea, try it. 5,000 failures to become worth $4 billion, it's worth it. I, I think so. Right? <laughs> Number seven, Abraham Lincoln. His art was grit. The man would get his butt kicked time after time after time. He had the longest list of failures, and they were broad and numerous. He achieved the unique feat, this is hard to do too, of leaving for war as a captain and coming back as a private. That's, that's some work, man. And that was not easy. Lincoln took failure in stride. He had several failed businesses, business attempts. He, um, he, he entered politics and failed there too with several failed runs at political office, but he eventually became the president of the United States. And not only the president of the United States, but one of our most influential presidents. How many times could he have quit? How many times should he have quit? When they made him a private. <laughs> yes, think about all that. I've been told a million times that you just don't quit. Don't you know you should quit? It's kind of like my, I don't know, my stubbornness. I just don't quit until I'm done. Yeah, I like to think that me being kind of relentless in what I'm doing is the reason why I don't look at certain things as failure. It's just part of the process. I don't, I don't see any failure. I really yeah. don't. So, number eight, Jerry Seinfeld. His art, making people laugh. Before creating a show about nothing, Seinfeld, he was doing stand-up. Get this. His first time on stage didn't go so well. On seeing the audience, as he came out, he froze and was booed off stage. This left Seinfeld with two choices. He had two choices. Quit 
and do something normal or connect to courage and step on that same stage the next night and treat the audience with his spark of inspiration and make them laugh. Thank God he took the second choice and became a legend. Number nine. Theodore Seuss Geisel, also known as Dr. Seuss. Seuss. Yeah. He was rejected by 27 different publishers for his art of writing children's books. He would go on to sell more than 600 million copies of his books. Again, Dr. Seuss could have quit and gotten some regular job and pay the bills, allowing his inspiration to die. He didn't. Number 10. Oprah Winfrey. Her art, touching the hearts of people. Oprah was fired from her first TV job as an anchor in Baltimore. In 2013, she reflected on her experience during her a Harvard commencement speech. There is no such thing as failure. Failure is just life trying to move you in another direction. Today, she is a billionaire with her own TV channel. By the way, you can't get fired from your own TV channel, right? <laughs> she never got fired again. Yeah. But that was it. She looks at failure as life trying to move us in another direction. That's a, I agree. I think that's a good thing. Number 11, Stephen King. His art, writing some horrific books. <laughs> but King, who once, you know, who he has become a mega novelist, but his first book, Carrie... You ever see Carrie? Mm -hmm. It was rejected 30 times. It's a lot of times we rejected, right? Especially when you write a book. When you write a book, it's like you gave birth. Ready to quit, he actually threw the book in the trash. And what happened was his wife retrieved it and implored him, please resubmit it. The rest is history. So it's always good to have a good partner too, right? Sometimes we need people to tell us, don't quit, don't give up. It's good. Right? But I think the, the spark of inspiration, is if it's a real spark and you have a good team around you, that, that you are inspiring others to believe your inspiration. It's good to have people believe in you. I, mm -hmm. Linda believes in me. Hell, I don't know why, but she sure does. <laughs> she <laughs> does believe in me. Number 12, Vincent Van Gogh. His art was painting. A Van Gogh painting will cost you today upwards of $100 million. But in his lifetime, he couldn't give away the paintings. But he kept painting and he kept painting. In fact, in his lifetime, he only sold one painting. And it was called the Red Vineyard. And this was sold just before he passed. He didn't get to enjoy the financial spoils of his work. But he was a painter. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? He didn't paint them to sell. Would he have liked to sell his paintings? Of course. But that wasn't his art. Does that make sense to you? It's my favorite artist, by the way. Yes. <laughs> I'm figures. <laughs> Number 13, Elvis Presley. His art was singing and swinging his hips. He, Elvis Presley changed everything. I don't care what anybody says. You can say the Beatles. This, no, Elvis Presley. That, that guy changed the world. He really did. After his first performance at the Grand Old Opry, which he was promptly fired, <laughs> he was told, you ain't going nowhere, son. You ought to go back to driving a truck. He became an icon that still rocks the stage today. He could still... And he, was still alive. he could still rock the stage. Number 14, Michael Jordan. His art, basketball and branding. <laughs> the, right? Sure. right? We've heard the story about Michael getting cut from his high school basketball team, right? We've all heard that. Well, he did go on to win six championships, five MVPs, and is considered the greatest player of all time. Here is Michael's take. I have missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I have lost more than 300 games. On 26 occasions, I have been entrusted to take the game-winning shot, and I missed. I have failed over and over again, and that is why I succeed. Incredible, right? Mm -hmm. So true inspiration starts with the spark. 
and then is fueled by the courage to take action. And this becomes a true art. That's what a true artist is. A true artist is somebody that can be inspired, feel the spark, and have the courage to take action. And each of us is a true artist. If we will honor ourselves, when we honor ourselves, we act from courage. You do not act from the outside in. No, you create your heart's desire without conforming to the demands of the tribe. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. You go against, that's the way it's always been done. You go against, that can't be done. You are inspired, encouraged. To live inspired begins with honoring you. You create the time and the space for self-care. It's here where the spark becomes a flame. Now, most of us get lost in the busyness of life, the busyness of living. We don't set time for our personal growth. We don't set time aside for us to just be with us. We simply do not honor the self. We are too busy trying to fit in and putting off our happiness sometime in the mythical future, right? And when you begin the ritual of self-honoring, you will rattle the cages around you. It may look selfish, but as you shift, expand, live in courage, and honor your inspiration and heart, you will begin to transform. This transformation isn't just you. It will be your entire tribe, spouse, parents, children, siblings, friends, associates, all grow because you transformed. All those that we talked about today, every one of those stories, had a self-honoring and they transformed. They had a self-honoring practice that created transformation. What has been the impact of them allowing inspiration to fire up and for them to act in courage? What has been that impact? It's been a world shift. Do you agree? Yeah. Thoughts there, inspired man. Um, what I've learned or what I think I've learned from it and it's been working for me is that, uh, acting on your inspired moments is really just a, it's honestly a numbers game. Really? Like you take every shot you possibly can and you bet on yourself every time, no matter what the other odds are. And, and eventually something will click because not everything you do will work a hundred percent. I, I can bet on that, that mm -hmm. it won't work a hundred percent of the time. But that one time that it does, that's all it takes. So literally, it's a numbers game and bet on yourself no matter what, anything around you or even, you know, you've been telling yourself mm -hmm. because that one time is all it takes. It's literally one time. So when people don't understand, you can't go in inspiration, take action and then tether it to something. Let me give you an example. See that book lane over there, David? The brown one? Yeah. You ever seen that in a bookstore? No. You ever seen it on an Amazon? No. It's called The Five Links of Permanent Weight Loss by Bill Courtright. How many books does that sell? 150 books. Probably because that's of those the colors. That's it. <laughs> Bad colors. Do you see the picture on it? Oh, yeah. The picture could have I'm done handsome. it. Too. The picture did it. So, I'm going to have to post that in the community, guys. That was my first book <laughs> I wrote. And I wrote that book for my heart. And <laughs> I laugh and I look at it. I could have been very. Um, I don't think it was a failure because that book mm -hmm. really opened up doors for me. That's the book that I took and um, when I was beginning in Panama, that was the book that it was like it was like I didn't fail from that book. But it, if I'm looking at success wise, that book on dollars didn't make any money, right? It was a failure as far as you're looking at it from a business point. But the next book that's over there, the Stress Response Diet book. That book sold 160,000 copies. Do you know how much money I made off that book, David? Do you know how many figures that book made? A lot. Seven figures. <laughs> and, and, but what would happen if I quit after the first one? Mm -hmm. What happens if I quit and say, you know, I can't, I'm not going to do that again. And I've got to be honest. I wanna be, I'm going to be honest to everybody. 
don't you think it was in the back of my mind a little bit when I was writing that next book and I had to put that next book out? <laughs> I thought, oh, oh, yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but then I really let it go. I can remember letting it go. Now, this new book, I don't think I've ever been so excited to put something out because this new book is just things I've been teaching for years and years and years, one-on-one, and never taught in a group the way I'm teaching now. So, but I'm not tethered to the sales. I don't compare because when the, when the truth book went out, that book went number one in six hours. Were you with working with me then? In six hours, it went number one, right? Second version. Yeah. Yeah, I remember it went that. number one, right? And, 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 but again, I wasn't tethered to it. I'm not tethered to it. I'm writing this book and I'm enjoying it. And I love what I'm putting out there because I want to share it. If 150 people buy it, I hope those 150 people become stress masteries. Stress masters. That's what I hope. Yeah, it's a book full of failures. It's it's yep. crazy when you look at it that yep. it's it's yes. a book written off of inspiration through yep. failures. And and that's how it always is gonna be something that is really, you know, meaningful and, and life changing, like I said, world changing is through an experience and from a connected place. You gotta build the fire, right? The fire of manifestation comes through action. And so this will end the episodes for inspiration this week. I think it was a very good week, very interesting. You did your first solo episode, right? You did your it was good. We had a great interview with Mark Middlestead. It was awesome, mm-hmm. right? And so next week, we're gonna start that 90-day challenge, that 12-week challenge, because we're gonna go into momentum. Tomorrow, we will, I think we're close to finishing our book study. Uh, the next book is going to be Wishes Fulfilled by Dr. Wayne Dyer. But I think we got probably two more weeks left on um, Michael, and we're going to be finishing that. We'll finish that tomorrow. So anything else you have? Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Turn your I want to's into I did. Wow. That's all I got. I'm doing. Doing. Right? That's it for today's show. Our mission is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission simply by like, share, and subscribe. Those links are right below the show. Are you doing solo Monday? No, I'm not. You sure? I'm sure. People love it. It's on momentum. You can do solo Monday. Maybe, because I got momentum from this week. (laughs) As always, until next time, stay inspired. inspired.